Hello and welcome to Springwood's Bedtime Story. We're going to have a look at another classic story today and today's story is Jack and the Beanstalk. So if you know it, why not join in? Jack and the Beanstalk, a classic fairy tale. This is the story mm -hmm. of how Jack did a silly thing, but all was well in the end. Jack and his mother were very poor and they came... And there came a sad day when there was just no more money left. So Jack's mother told him to take the cow to the market and sell her. As Jack led the cow to the market, he met a funny little man with a tall feather in his hat. And where might you be going with a fine looking cow? The funny little man asked. Jack explained. And the funny little man swept off his hat with a tall feather and shook out five coloured beans. Well, young Jack, I can save you the journey. I will give you these five magic beans in exchange for your cow. Now Jack should have realised that this was all rather odd, for how did the funny little man know his name? But once he heard the word magic, he didn't stop to think. He took the beans at once and gave the funny man the cow and ran off home to his mum. Jack, you are a complete fool. You have exchanged our fine cow for five worthless beans. She flung the beans out of the window and sent Jack to bed without any supper. When he woke in the morning, Jack couldn't understand why it was so dark in the cottage. He rushed outside to find his mother staring in amazement at the most enormous beanstalk that reached right up to the clouds. I told you they were magic beans, smiled Jack, and without any hesitation, he began to climb with the beanstalk. He climbed and he climbed until he could no longer see the ground below. When he reached the top, there, was a, there stood a vast castle. Jack knocked at the door and it was opened by a huge woman. My husband eats little boys for breakfast, so you better run away quickly, she said to Jack. But before Jack could reply, the ground started to shake. Too late, the giant's wife said. You must hide, and she bundled Jack into a cupboard. Jack peeped through the keyhole and saw the most colossal man stump into the kitchen. Fee, fi, fo, fum, I smell the blood of an Englishman, he roared. Don't be silly, dear, you can smell the sausages. I have just cooked for your breakfast, said the giant's wife, placing a plate of piled high with 163 sausages in front of him. The giant did not seem to have a very good table manner, and he gobbled the lot. Then he poured a great bag of gold onto the table and counted all the coins. With a smile on his face, he soon fell asleep. Jack darted out the cupboard, grabbed the bag of money, and hurried out to the kitchen. He slithered down the beanstalk as fast as he could, and there, still standing at the bottom, was his mother. She was astonished when she saw the gold. Jack's mother bought two new cows and Jack and she and Jack were very content. Now they had plenty to eat every day. But after a while Jack decided he would like to climb the beanstalk again. The giant's wife was not very pleased to see him. My husband lost a bag of coal gold the last time you were here, she muttered, cl looking closely at Jack. But then the ground began to shake, and Jack hid in the cupboard again. The Jack stumped into the kitchen. Fee, fi, fo, fum, I smell the blood of an Englishman, he roared. Don't be silly, you can smell the chickens. I have just cooked for your breakfast, said the giant's wife, pla placing a plate piled high with 38 chickens in front of him. The giant had soon gobbled a lot. Then he lifted his golden hen onto the table and said, Lay! And the hen laid a golden egg. With a smile on his face, he fell asleep, snoring loudly. Jack darted out of the cupboard, grabbed the golden hen and hurried out of the kitchen. He slithered down the beanstalk as fast as he could, and there, still standing at the bottom, was his mother. She was astonished when she saw the hen. Jack's mother bought a herd of cows and found a farmer to look after them. She bought lots of new clothes for herself and Jack, and they were very content. But after a while, Jack decided he would climb the beanstalk one last time. The giant's wife was not pleased to see him. My husband lost a golden egg the last time you were here. She peered closely at Jack and then the ground began to shake and tremble. This time, 
Jack hid under the table. The giant stumped into the kitchen. Fee, fi, fo, fum, I smell the blood of an Englishman, he roared. I would look in the cupboard if I were you, said the giant's wife, but of course the cupboard was empty. They were both puzzled. The giant trusted his nose and the wife didn't know where Jack had gone. Eat your breakfast, dear. I have just cooked you 92 fried eggs. And the giant's wife placed a plate in front of him. The giant soon gobbled the lot. Then he lifted his golden harp onto the table and said, Play! And the harp played so sweetly, the giant was soon fast asleep, snoring loudly. Jack crept from under the table, grabbed the golden harp, but as soon as he touched the harp, it called out, Master! Master! And the giant woke with a great start. He chased after Jack, who scrambled down the beanstalk as fast as he could, with the harp in his arms. As soon as Jack reached the ground, he raced to get a big axe and chopped through the beanstalk. Down tumbled the great beanstalk. Down tumbled the giant. And that was the end of both of them. Jack and his mother lived very happily for the rest of their days. The bag of golden coins never ran out, and the hen laid a golden egg every day. And the harp soon forgot about the giant and played sweetly for Jack and his mother. The end.